What is going on, clan? Welcome to part six of the Dark Souls 3 guide. Now, from the profane capital, we're going to go down the ladder, and we're going to fight our next boss, Yorm the Giant. Now, this boss is really easy, to be completely honest with you, but make your way down, and you're going to go down this bridge. You're going to see those priests over there that are casting fireballs at you. You just want to avoid them, and then avoid the gargoyle up ahead. Yeah, make sure he doesn't knock your ass off, because you really don't want that. Okay, and just keep going forward. You can grab the soul there if you want. But where we're going is down the steps here. We're going to avoid pulling those enemies. And we're going to go through this big archway to the left. This is going to put us at the boss fight. Now this boss fight, you have to use a, I guess should be called the gimmick weapon. And when you go inside, you're going to run straight to the throne in the very back of the room. So I recommend going around him, trying to dodge his attacks. He's very slow to be completely honest, so you shouldn't really, you guys won't struggle on this, like you guys are beast. So you want to come grab the storm ruler and then quickly equip it while he's not attacking you. And then you just need to hold L2 and while you're doing that, it's going to charge the weapon. Now I recommend doing this when he's not actually attacking you. Um, Sigurd is there as well, so sometimes when he has aggro, you can actually just attack him or completely miss like I just did. So it's got a pretty good range, but you want to make sure you lined up pretty good. And then once you see it kind of fully charged, give him a good old swing, and you'll eventually kill him. That's literally the fight, guys. Okay, so after you beat him, you're going to end up in our next area. It's going to take you back to the area where we were at the start against Vort across the room. So if you remember, he was all the way down here at the very end of this long pathway. So if you haven't chose that um, Chaos Bed Vestiges spell that I mentioned before, make sure you go back, give this guy the Transposing Kiln, and then make sure you, you know, purchase the Chaos Bed Vestiges from him. So if you've still yet to do that, I recommend doing it because it does a lot of damage. Again, in my clips, I didn't have it because I'm an idiot, but I'm trying to save you guys the trouble. Now again, you can always come over to Cornix and upgrade your Pyromancy. Since I didn't have the Chaos Bed Vestiges, um, I actually went with the Great Chaos Orb. But again, please use the Vestiges if you've been following the guide, because it does a lot of damage. Another thing you can do is come over here to Carla, just under the bridge of the Blacksmith. Ask her to learn Dark Sorceries. We're going to give her the Pyromancy Tomes that we unlocked. So you may as well turn all of these Pyromancy Tomes in before our next boss fight anyways. She can teach you um, hexes and things like that. And another thing you want to use, if you're using the Chaos Bed Vestiges, you want to make sure that your rings are in order. So you want to have the ring that actually raises your fire damage or your pyromancy damage. Or if you're going to use the Black Fire Orb, for example, then you want to use the ring that raises your dark fire damage. I still recommend using just the normal fire, to be completely honest, because it also does a shitload of damage with the Chaos Vestiges spell. But as you can see, you can do the Dark Clutch Ring or the Fire Clutch Ring. And then we've got the Great Swamp Ring. And we have the Sage Ring. Things that are all going to be basically upgraded spells. You want to make sure you have enough Mana Flasks as well. And then of course you always want to attune those spells before the boss fight. After you have all of those, you can head back to Vort's Bonfire. And then run all the way back into here where we spawned. You just need to talk to the NPC here. Talk or attack, either or, as long as she dies. After a little bit, it's going to trigger a cutscene, and we're going to be fighting the Dancer. Now, the Dancer has a lot of, like, cool, crazy moves, to be honest, like spins, and, yeah, she does, like, 360 no-scopes. But as you can see, I'm still doing big dick damage, and you guys will do even better because you'll be using the Bed Vestiges spell. Um, I was just using the Great Chaos Fire Orb, so I wasn't doing that much damage. But as you can see, it's still just standing back, casting and then rolling and then that's essentially all you have to really do if you're struggling you can always ask for a co-op partner but once you have her defeated you're going to get another trophy and then just activate the bonfire i'd honestly say she's one of the cooler fights in the game as well after that use the bonfire to go to rosaria's bed chamber you can go ahead and kill the little slug guy here and you'll see that she's actually dead now. So you want to grab the item that's next to her, the black eye orb. 
So we're going to grab the black eye orb, go back to the bonfire. And now this time we're going to hit travel and we're going to be going to the, so we go to the Aldrich Devourer of God's bonfire because we're going to use that orb we just got. So again, we're going to go around the side here and go up that lift that we went to when we first did this boss and we grab that ring. But instead of, you know, doing all that again, what we're doing is once we go in this room, you're going to see a message appear. You feel the black eye quivering. So if you go into your inventory and hit use on the black eye, you're going to invade the Rosaria's killer world. This is going to put you in a battle against Leonard. Now he's not too bad. He can heal and things like that. But once you kill him, you're going to get the soul of Rosaria. After you get the soul, make your way back down to the bonfire. And this time we're going to go to the dancer of the Boreal Valley bonfire. And again, you can farm some sunlight medals here in front of the dancer's room. You might get lucky and find some people. It was definitely more active back in the day. But as you can see, my boy Jimmy here needed some help. So even though the game's a bit old now, I did manage to find someone. We had a really good time. We destroyed the dancer. And I thought, yo, him and I could actually have a threesome with my wife. Excluding my wife, of course. And again, you don't have to worry about that if you're going to farm those medals online. So you can ignore that and then proceed up this ladder and you can just activate the ladder by going up to that statue. Now, once you unlock the ladder, if you make your way directly to the left, you're gonna go out this doorway and then down some stairs. You're gonna find an enemy up ahead. You can actually ignore him if you'd like, or you can kill him with magic. And then what you'll do is you'll go down the lift that he was guarding, and you can drop down on a middle platform instead of going all the way down. And then when you're on this middle platform, if you make a right, you're going to find yourself an Estes Shard. So that'll be another upgrade for our flask. And then after you grab the Estes Shard, you can turn around, make your way up the stairs again, and then down the other side. You can see a few enemies down there, but just keep going around and then drop down on this platform here. So you should just fall right on there. Now watch out for those big enemies there, and then you can quickly run through here. Be careful not to stay in that because it gives you toxicity, which does a lot of damage. So we're going to run through here to avoid that, and then we'll run down this area, and then there'll be another spot of toxicity that we need to go through, so I'm just going to try and get through it quickly. And we're going to enter in this building to the right. You're going to find another lift that you can take. So go ahead and ride it up. Even if you aggroed enemies, you should be able to get in there without being chased. And then once you're on top right here, you can see the lift can keep going up, but you want to jump off on the very first stop. Then you're going to go down the stairs here, and we're going to find another ring. So this will be the dragon scale ring. And then we can keep going forward onto this roof. There's going to be an enemy here that you can kill. And if you hug the wall down here when you drop, you can see that knight over there in the distance by the doorway. That's the knight that we have to kill for a ring. The other knight to the left, you don't have to kill. So you can ignore the one on the left, but try and aggro the one on the right. And then once you kill him, you'll get another ring. All right, so after you've got all of those items in this area, you can go through the doorway that he was guarding. So over here to the right. And again, you don't have to kill that knight on the left. If he aggroes, you could just run straight past him and then go into the boss room. Now the boss's first phase, he's pretty easy. He's very, very slow and kind of predictable. Um, again, you'll be using big dick magic. You won't be using the little baby bitch spell like I'm using. And once he gets to about, I'd say about half health, maybe a little over that, he goes into like a fit of rage and he's super fast and things like that. So I'm showing a clip of, of basically my new game plus run because I actually found out a way to cheese the boss and we can get him stuck. So as you can see, he's at like three fourths of his health. And now he's going to go ape shit. And if you go around this corner here while he's going crazy, try and lure him around here and then dodge away. And then if you go around really quickly, try not to get stuck like me, he'll actually be stuck there because he'll just keep trying to run at you. And you can just blast him with your magic or you can go up and hit him with your melee as well. Just be careful of his ice attack that he does there. But look, if a game's giving you too much macaroni, then you got to use the cheese, right? So there you go, an easy way to kill the Consumed King, and you'll get a trophy and then activate the bonfire that appears behind you. Now that's a good way we can make that boss really easy. Whenever there's a nice cheesy method, I'm happy to give it. After we go ahead and light that bonfire, we'll make our way through the door ahead. So you come to a long hallway here with an enemy at the end. You can just quickly take him out, 
It's not too much of a threat. And again, you can see that I'm using the bitch boy magic. So I went to switch and then we're just going to kill him. He just kind of stays there. I don't think he can come at you if you're standing back like that. He's got a certain range where he stays. We can make our way forward. You're going to find a new gesture. That's going to be our 24th gesture, guys. We only need two more and we'll get the trophy. It's still quite a while before we get those last two, though, so don't worry about that just yet. Just be happy that's almost one more trophy down. You're going to come across a chest here. You can open. doesn't really have anything that we necessarily need, but then you can hit the wall behind it to open up a new pathway. Now, upon entering here, you're going to get a trophy. Now, the trophy pops once you actually have the name come up of the area. And then you can light the bonfire. Now, this is sort of like a familiar area. It almost looks like the beginning of the game. But there is an item we can grab in this area as well. So once you come out of this zone here, there's a left and a right. And you want to make your way to the left. There's going to be quite a few enemies here, but you can just take them all out. And then they're going to be guarding our next ring. So just kill all of them. And then you can grab the ring they were guarding. So that's our 43rd ring. We're kind of getting through that list. We're going to have quite a bit at the end of the game. Now we're going to make our way forward. So this time we're going the right path. And we'll go straight past this enemy. You can just skip him. Now this guide here is actually going to be up until the final boss. And then our next video will be the final boss and some cleanup. So we're getting there, guys. We're smashing it out. Hopefully you've been enjoying the guides. If you have... Make that thumb button blue for me, man. That's all I ask. Keep making your way through here. This is going to be exactly like the beginning area, so you should be quite familiar with it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty much the same boss. So he's a little bit different. He's definitely more aggressive. Um, but right when you come in here, he's going to just start attacking. So once you get close, he's already aggroed. You can just start wailing on him. So, again, start using your magic. You should be doing a lot more damage than me since you'll be using a better spell. And I just kept kind of rolling around, getting a few hits in, letting him get aggressive. And then while he does the big hits, come in and just finish him off. So he shouldn't take you guys too long. You guys will probably smash him out first try. You're already veterans at this point. And after you get the trophy, you can light the bonfire. And then up ahead is going to be a door, just like in the beginning of the game. Kind of feeling like a little bit like deja vu, you know? Open up the door here. Now, once you come outside over this area, you're going to find a lot of these uh, kind of like the Honor Londo Knights. So just be careful because uh, they can still do a lot of damage, but so can you now. So go ahead and take that guy out on the stairs. Make your way up further, and there's going to be another knight. So I'll just show you so you don't get ambushed, and we can just do this. <laughs> After you take him out, make your way to the right of the doorway of the Firelink Shrine. So don't go into the Firelink Shrine yet because we're going to get another ring. And on the right over here is going to be another knight kind of hidden away. And he's guarding another ring. So take him out and then you can grab the ring. So we'll get the Hornet Ring next to that gravestone and then we can head into the Firelink Shrine. So go back around and then go through the doorway. Now we're going to make our way inside the Firelink Shrine, and at the middle you can pick up the Coiled Sword Fragment. This is basically a Homeward Bone that doesn't get consumed. So now you have infinite Homeward Bone travels, so you can equip that on your Quick Bar. And next we're going to get a Quest Item, but we won't be using this anytime soon. But it is missable, so please grab this item. If you come down the stairs over here and around the corner, you're going to find an Illusionary Wall. And we're going to find the Firekeeper's Eyes. And again, you can miss these, so please make sure you grab them. After you grab the Firekeeper's Eyes, make your way back around. And then this time we're going to go sort of towards where the blacksmith is. But we're going to go up and then go over to the Shrine Handmaid. We're going to buy a ring from her, so you do need some souls. So use some of the small souls if you do need to use some. Again, please do not use boss souls, but you're going to buy the Priestess Ring. So that's another ring we can add to our collection. Again, this is only applicable to you if you are actually collecting them and someone hasn't dropped them for you for the trophy. But that's the only ring we need to grab from here. And then after that, we can equip the Coiled Sword Fragment, like I said before, and this will be our permanent Homeward Bone. 
So you can then go to the last bonfire that you rested at. It should take you back to where we killed Ludix. And then you want to use the bonfire to go back to the dancer's bonfire. So again, we'll go back up the stairs like we did the first time. The only difference is this time we're not going the same route. So this time we're going to go directly straight. There's going to be a lot of these knights in this area. You can just run past them if you'd like. Make your way around here and then to the right so you don't aggro those guys. And then down here you'll find a few of these casters as well as the knights. But there's going to be a bonfire right past them. So if you want, you can just run in and not get fucking beat up like I was. But run in, grab the bonfire behind them. You'll likely have to kill at least one of them to actually rest at the bonfire. So I recommend killing them. We're going to be farming those for the sunlight metals offline if you were doing it that method. But for now, we're just going to continue on the path. And there's going to be a lot of enemies here. I'm going to do the classic skip all this bullshit. And then when you come up the staircase here, watch out because there's a big guy that jumps and tries to land on you. He just comes around the side right there. So try and avoid him. And there's actually a bonfire here to the left that you can grab. We're about to grab it in a moment. So if you think that you're prone to dying, you can grab it beforehand. But what we're going to do is quickly before the dragons breathe fire, we're going to jump down past the bridge here and fall on this ledge. This is going to give us another undead bone shard. And then from here, we can drop off the ledge to the right. And then you're going to find a doorway we can go through. So this doorway is going to lead back around to where that bonfire was, and then we'll pick up the bonfire. So make your way out here. Go up the stairs. Again, there's a few enemies, but you can just run past them. So I'm going to keep rolling so I don't get hit. I did get invaded there. Or sorry, I invaded a world because I had that thing on. So then I kept going around after the invasion, and then I lit the bonfire. So again, make sure you light the bonfire. It's going to save you some troubles. Next, what we want to do is we want to buy some arrows if we don't have any. You can buy them from the handmaid like before, or you can also buy them from Grey Rat down below by the blacksmith. And we're going to use these arrows for another easy but cheesy method. So just buy as much as you can. You honestly shouldn't need as many as I bought. You could probably get away with 100 as long as you're doing it as I said. Or as I show you rather. So again, I'm just buying a decent amount of arrows, making sure I had enough. It doesn't really matter what kind of arrows you use. I'm just using the really shitty ones. And then you can equip the Karthus Milk Ring as well to increase your dexterity. That'll let you equip the bow efficiently. And then... As you can see, I'm fat rolling, but we don't really need to worry about that. I'm going to equip the bow and come up here by the dragon. And you want to line yourself up like I have. So you see when I zoom in exactly where I'm standing. And when I zoom out where I'm standing. And we're going to just keep shooting from right here. Okay, maybe not right there. We're going to move over. And you can adjust yourself accordingly. And you just want to keep shooting. And when you see that he's taking damage, that's a fairly good indication that you're doing something right. Um, we're basically trying to hit the corrupt part that's on his tail and we're just slowly chipping away at that. I think it probably took me about a minute of shooting arrows and then he finally died. So again, that sort of, it's like a corruption on his tail that's going to kill him and then we can cross the bridge much easier. That doesn't fully kill him. I'll show you how we can do that for some extra souls here in a minute. You can switch back to your pyromancy rings and things like that if you did equip the Karthus ring. You can pick up any souls that, like, maybe if some noob died here. And as you can see, he's not fully dead. He's still there on the map. He hasn't despawned. So what we do is around the right of where that dragon is, if you come into this open area and go up the ladder, you're going to get ambushed by a lot of enemies. So just be ready to take them on. They're nothing too crazy, but as you can see, I'm already getting attacked. And after you kill all of the enemies, you're going to see that corruption I was talking about. Fire is really good against it, so use your fire spells. And once you kill that, you'll not only get a decent chunk of souls, you'll get Titanite chunks, some embers, and also the dragon will despawn. You can do that on the other side as well, but I'll show you that a bit later. For now, we're going to make our way back inside. And we're going to go around here. So you can either go back down the ladder and to your right. But it's probably easier just to come up here to the left. Then you can skip all of those enemies. 
you don't have to kill all of them as you can see that chaos fire orb leaves a trail there so they just kind of killed themselves which was pretty handy and then after you cleared out this area or just ran past it sort of depends on what you want to do you just want to come over here and pull this lever they're pretty easy though, so you can just kill them. But after you pull the lever, that's gonna open the front gate to the castle. You can come around here to the right and you're gonna find a knight who's like really fucking aggressive. So try to run from him and run up the stairs here. If you're really quick, he shouldn't follow you up here. I'm pretty sure he did on mine, but just um, be aware of that. So if you do it correctly, he shouldn't follow you. But if he does just kill him Come over here, pick up a sunlight metal. That's one less that we have to farm, which is always good. So then you don't have to farm as many online or offline. After you grab the sunlight metal, come around to the right. After you grab the sunlight metal, make your way over here. We're not going to drop down that area yet. We're going to go up this ladder. Once you're up this ladder, you're going to see two enemies at the very end of this area, but also a big guy that comes out. So you just want to make sure you don't aggro them all, or if you do, you're ready for it. Again, you'll have a better spell because it'll actually kind of chuck it at them where mine is more of like a lob, so it's not that great. All right, so after we take them out, make your way inside the area where they were just kind of guarding. You're going to find a ladder you can go down. Make your way down the ladder for another ring. It's just at the back of this room. So we'll get the knight's ring, and then we'll go out the doorway past the ladder to our right. You're going to see a hallway that's lit up and a knight at the end of the corridor here. Just take him out. And we're going to get our second to last gesture right now. So after this, we'll only need one more. We won't be getting it anytime soon, but at least you can rest easy that you only need one left. So gesture 25, we can finally praise the sun and be so grossly incandescent. It truly is a magnificent sight. We're not going to offer any sunlight medals. We're just going to head over to this doorway here. You can open that chest as well. That's fine. Nothing that you need for a trophy, but come over to this area here and you can kind of just drop down. You'll see another corruption there. So just be ready to fight it. You want to carefully kill it. If you do want the souls, you don't have to kill it, but you know, you can watch out for that chest there. That's a mimic. You don't need to kill it unless you need the symbol of avarice. Then you can kill it to hopefully get one, which I 100% recommend. And then you want to grab the tome that's sitting there. After we grab the tome and if you kill the mimic, if you need the symbol of avarice, then you can head back down. We're going to go back around up the stairs where that knight was. And again, you just want to haul ass if you didn't kill him. As you can see, he's fucking pissed. Like this guy comes out of nowhere. This dude has a grudge. So make your way all the way to the top. And then where we're going to go from this doorway next is actually to the right. So you can see up ahead is a boss wall. We don't want to just go there yet. We're going to come up this area here. There isn't really any enemies here, so you should be safe. And then come out the doorway to the left. And we're going to find another ring. So that'll get you the red tear stone ring. Now after that, we can make our way back outside. Head down the stairs to our right and then out the doorway. And you can activate this lift as well if you want. It's just a shortcut. So you can go ahead and activate that so you have that shortcut unlocked. That takes you right before the dancer's room or after the dancer's room, sorry. So if you do want to get back to the boss a little bit quicker. Now this boss, I find using the middle statue to be really good to kite him around. Especially since you guys will have a better spell for this. It's a lot faster to cast and things like that. So as you can see, my spell staggered him and I did some additional damage. Occasionally, he's going to get the dragon to attack you as well. So you just kind of want to roll away. But you can see I'm just using the statue in the middle to kind of protect myself. So you can sort of cheese him in that sense because he can't really keep up and his attacks are pretty slow. But once you kill him, you're going to get another trophy and then a bonfire to unlock. So chug yourself some Estus Flask because you've done well. And after he's dead, you can activate the next bonfire. And then we'll go a bit forward and there'll be another bonfire with some items on the floor that we want to collect. Now the next area is just a giant library. It's called the Grand Archives. And I'll be able to guide you guys through it pretty easily. 
So again, go forward and activate our next bonfire. And then you can see a key item up ahead. It's the key to actually get inside the Grand Archives. So grab the key and then make your way through the doorway. Now, right at the start of this area, you'll get jumped by a sage. He looks just like the crystal sage. And after you do a little bit of damage, he'll just teleport away. And we won't see him until we're up a bit higher in the library. So after that, make your way around the left of where he was up the stairs. And then at the top of the stairs, you're going to go right. You're going to go straight and then wrap around and go right and then go straight ahead. You're going to run past a few of these semen demons, these like Bukaki monsters with white stuff all over them. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Okay. But come into this dark area here and on the right side, you want to keep rolling and you want to avoid the bookcases because there's these like evil hands that come out and they'll do some pretty decent damage to you. But on the right there, there was a lever and it pulls down this bookcase and it's going to help us find a pyromancy. So that's another ability we unlocked that actually increases your pyromancy. So if you want, you can equip it and use it in boss fights and you're going to do more damage with your pyromancy spells on top of your rings as well. So all that damage will stack, make your way up the stairways past another semen demon. Then we're going to go over here to the stairway. You can see the crystal sage is up above. You can see him clipping through the bottom. Make your way all the way up. Watch out for that candle guy because he can freeze you in some of the some of the white sticky stuff he shoots out. Yeah, man, I, I like I said, I don't know. Okay, it's a little sus, but just keep going past them all. Now, you could kill them all, but that sounds fucking horrible. So we're just going to run past and we're going to unlock this illusionary wall. Now, there's a giant creature in here you want to avoid. You probably do want to, you know, kill the assassins and things like that from behind because we can kind of cheese our, our way with this guy as well. If you lure him all the way to the back over here, just avoid the hands again, like I said before, because they will do a lot of damage and they can also blight you. So that will insta kill you. Okay. And as you can see, there'll be an invisible barrier here and he won't be able to reach us. So I'm just going to try and aggro him again. And then I killed him. After you kill him, you can go inside where he was kind of nesting in. And you'll find a doorway at the very back to the right. And this is going to lead us to another sorcery. And on this body, you're going to find the sorcery soul stream. After you do that, make your way back out the doorway where this guy was nesting. So we'll head back out here. And again, just kill all the assassins beforehand and you should be able to take this big guy out pretty easy. Once you come out of the room here, you're going to see this banister that's broken. Now you also find the crystal sage here. You can actually kill him. Just try to avoid his attacks because they do a lot of damage. After you kill him, you get the crystal scroll and then you want to go the other way until you see the knight. And then before the doorway is going to be a lever. So if you're at the wrong side, just try the other side. It's going to open up the bookcase and you're going to find the scholar ring. So there's another ring for our collection. Again, just look for that lever. Now, after that, you can grab the Titanite chunk there if you'd like. We'll go back up the staircase over here and make our way across. We're going to then go forward and all the way up the stairs. Keep going up. Once you're up here, you can activate the shortcut to go down. And this will have a door that you can open. So make your way over to the door. Make sure you open it with the lever. And this actually takes you back to the bonfire right outside of the Grand Archives. So you can see it'll take us back out to the entrance of it. That'll save you a little bit of trouble if you do die. You then want to make your way around the right and we're going to go up another staircase. You'll be in this kind of open area and there is a semen demon to the right. Well, there's two of them actually. And then up ahead over here is another one. So just roll through, avoid the white stuff. Something you wouldn't do in real life, but you want to do it in the game. Don't do that. But just grab the ring over here. You want to be really quick. But again, be quick because those hands do damage you a fair bit. And then that'll get you the flesh bite ring. And then come out here to the right and then drop down the ladder. You can just drop down because it's not a far drop. Make your way up the left here to scale up the roof. And then you can go down on this side. Well, it doesn't really matter if you go around either or. And then come down this way. Now you're going to start seeing these big gargoyles. So you just want to be quick. 
So while he's attacking nothing, we're going to run right past him. And we're going to keep scaling the rooftops. So go all the way up here. And then again, we're going to go over this rooftop here. Try not to fall off like I almost did. And then drop down over here and then go right. You're going to see another gargoyle. I'm just going to be quick. Try and dodge him. And then we're going to go around the right again. You want to drop off onto this balcony. You're going to see a broken window where you can go in. Just be careful because he can hit you through the window. So you want to quickly grab the item that's on here that didn't let me grab it. But you're going to see an undead bone shard to upgrade our flask yet again. And again, you want to avoid the gargoyle. And you want to kick this ladder down because it's going to be a shortcut for you. Just watch out for the caster. And then we'll come around here to the left. Make your way forward. And then you'll be outside. Now there's a few enemies here, but there's also going to be a really massive shortcut that we're going to unlock. So you really don't want to die here. I recommend just healing to full before doing this run. So we're going to run past here and you're going to avoid all of these guys. So just keep rolling. They will follow you into this room, but I recommend just going down the lift. This will be a massive shortcut for us. It's going to be right outside of the Grand Archives bonfire. You can go back to the Firelink Shrine, upgrade your flask a fair bit, and you can also level up if needed. It may as well use your souls to level up and power your character. And again, you can burn the undead bone shards, and that's going to get you a trophy as well. So that was your final one. And then we'll head back to the Grand Archive, so make sure you burn that undead bone shard. Don't forget about it. Extra healing will always help out. Then you'll come up this area outside of that room with a lift. You're going to go over a lot of these rooftops and then go to the right around the very back of it. And we'll keep going around the back. This will avoid a lot of the enemies as well. So stay on the rooftop, go to the very back. Once you get to this last staircase, go up the stairs and then right again. And then that way you can come through this little doorway. You'll be on this giant roof with a fence or a banister around it. And then you can grab an Estus shard. So that'll be another upgrade for us for our flask. And there's still a few more things we can grab in this area. So for example, now we're going to go to the center tower here. So look for the staircase. And then you want to go up the staircase and then up the ladder that's up here. This will be for another ring. So we'll go all the way up. And then on the ledge here is going to be another ring. After you get the ring, you can drop down onto the little rooftop ahead of you. Just make sure you don't fall off and die. Just kind of drop down and then you can drop down again. After you drop down both times, you can then drop down a third time. You will take a little bit of damage. But then you can quickly run in here before you aggro enemies. You want to just be careful falling here. You want to land on the pole there or the beam. And then you can drop on the birdcage. And then go inside the birdcage to get another miracle. So make sure you grab this miracle. Now we're going to use our coiled sword to go back to the shrine bonfire. And the reason is we want to turn in some of those scrolls we got. So we got the crystal scroll from that sage in there. And you do not want to kill the next boss before you give it to this guy. If you kill the next boss and you do not give him the crystal scroll, he's going to disappear and that's going to lock you out of the trophies. So again, please ensure that you've given him the crystal scroll before you kill our next boss, the Twin Princes. After you've given him the scroll, you can come over to Cornix and upgrade your pyromancy arm if you need to. So see if you have enough materials and upgrade it. If not, that's fine as well. Just go ahead and head over to the blacksmith. You can upgrade your sword again if you have the materials. And you can also upgrade your Estus flask. After that, you can go over to Grey Rat. And you can purchase more of the arrows. Or you can do it from the handmade as well. So for example, I'll just buy some standard arrows. I think you do need to use standard or wood for this next cheese that I'm going to show you. But then head back to the Grand Archives. Take the lift back up to where we came from. And this time we're going to head straight out the door and go down this very long path of enemies to make it to the boss. So if you follow my path, you can avoid a lot of their attacks. And if you keep rolling and then pause to get some stamina back and then keep rolling again, you can make it all the way to the very end. So again, maybe by now through our Dark Souls journey, you feel like the game's giving you more macaroni. And for the next fight, you want to use the cheese. 
Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. At the very end here, as you're running, you're going to see a bunch of pissed off knights. You're going to look like that Pornhub meme with Piper. You know what I'm talking about. Because they're just going to be swinging on you. Open up that door. Keep going all the way into the boss room to trigger the fight. Now, in his first phase, he's pretty easy. He's fairly slow. You're going to just fight the Elder Prince. So again, I'm just using my shitty spell. You guys will slam through him pretty quickly. You just want to dodge his teleports. And then he does like a short kind of, you know, slow attack. Then attack him again. He'll do a teleport. I'm trash, obviously. So yeah, in order to do the cheese, when you actually kill him, so you can see his health is low, you want to kill him around the red carpet here. So you can see how we're kind of on the red carpet. I'm trying to bait him onto it. And then I kill him on that red carpet. Now this will trigger it to where you're behind the boss after the cutscene, and he basically has no aggro on you. Now if you do move very quickly at any point, he is going to aggro on you, or if you go in front of him, things like that. You can sort of walk slowly, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to just show you how to do the cheese method. Otherwise, if you just want to fight him normally, just kill him with your magic, it's pretty easy. But as you can see, I can do a slow walk. But for the cheese, all you need to do is equip your bow again. You can equip the Karthus ring, and you just want to shoot right there at his hood. So you can see I'm kind of under the hood part. You just want to shoot there because it's going to kind of glitch. And eventually, I think it took probably like maybe two and a half minutes, probably longer than that. But once you do that, there you go. He's just going to drop dead, and you just covered him with some cheese. So that's another method in case you guys are struggling with that fight. Either way, I really don't see you guys having issues, but there's another method for you. You're going to get another trophy, another Cinder of the Lord, and you can activate the bonfire in this room. After you've got the bonfire, make your way to the Irithyll dungeon. Now, I bet you didn't miss this place, because I know I fucking don't, and I sure as shit know you don't. But thankfully, we don't really have to do anything here. We're just going to cut kind of through to go to a shortcut. So we're going to go to the right. Then we're going to go left over the bridge. Make your way past those priests. Just try to avoid them so you don't lose health. And then go left through the shortcut door. We're going to go all the way down to the end of this path. You see that cell that we've opened before. But you just want to drop down and then go through this shortcut. And you remember this shortcut had that lift that we unlocked. So you can pull that if the lift is actually down. Wait for that to come up and then make your way down the lift. Now we're going to go to a new area. So you'll notice this empty spot here against the wall. Just stand in this place here. Open up your gesture menu with the touchpad, if I'm not mistaken. And then go over to the path of the dragon emote and then press square to test it. And then just sit there until you get a cutscene. Should only take about six or so seconds. That'll trigger a cutscene, and they'll take you to the peak. Now, once you move a bit forward and explore the area, you are going to get a trophy for exploring this area. We're going to just make our way up to the top. There's going to be a lot of enemies up in this area. Now, I kind of just kamikaze it and ran past everything, but it's probably a bit easier if you kill them. So we're going to keep going forward and then around the right here. You can ignore that area over there. But as you can see here, there's a lot that shoot fireballs and stuff at you. So it probably is worth killing. They can overwhelm you pretty easily like you can see here because there's quite a bit of them. So I'm getting my shit kicked in, but we're going to quickly activate the bonfire. Activate that, then you can kill them to actually rest. Okay, after you've done that, make your way up the staircase here, sort of towards the entrance, but we're going to go around the left side. The left side will wrap around here and then up a staircase. And then you can drop down so you don't aggro any enemies. We'll go around the left here. There's going to be one enemy in this area right here, so just try to kill him. That was a terrible throw. And there's going to be a ring that he's guarding, so quickly take him out, or just get fucked like I did. And then grab the ring that he was guarding. So that's going to get you the lightning clutch ring. After you grab that ring, make your way back towards the front of the entrance. Go all the way around to the left here, and then you're going to pull the lever by the door to open the gate. 
Now this is going to be a boss. It's a really easy boss. It's more of like a running gauntlet kind of thing than an actual boss. So the wyvern will come in the area here. And he actually glitched on my first attempt, so hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But just run straight past him. And you're going to go left from the bell. And then right here, you actually want to go forward past the enemy and just keep rolling so you don't take damage. Because as you can see, that wyvern fucked me up because I was kind of taking too long there. So you want to make sure you're really fast around that part. Just go straight and then pass this area here and then go right up the stairs. Again, there's going to be more enemies around the corner, so I recommend just keep rolling. Make your way all the way up the stairs, and again, keep rolling right here because there's going to be more enemies. Make sure you don't fall off. There's going to be two enemies at the end of this bridge here. I like to wait for the big guy to come down just a little bit. So try to get him to come at you like that, and then you can roll past him. That way it gives you a bit of time because there's a ladder you have to climb over here. So go all the way forward, past this enemy. Now that last guy, I usually try to bait and attack from, but if he doesn't attack, I just climb the ladder. Then you want to quickly hug the wall over here to the right so you don't get hit by the wyvern's fire. And then you're going to drop off this little platform onto this platform. He'll probably breathe fire again and lift his head up. Just wait until he drops his head again. You want to jump off the ledge there. You can just run off and then hit R1 to do an attack. It's going to basically just kind of magnetize to his head and it's going to trigger a one shot kill. That's going to also pop a trophy. There you go. So after that, you'll get the ancient wyvern trophy. It should automatically teleport you to the next area. That's usually what it does there after you've killed them. You're going to light the bonfire and then make your way inside this area here. There is an enemy that spawns here. You can take out the caster that's up above. You can see him up there and there's an enemy that spawns right there. So I recommend taking out the caster first or he's just going to keep reviving the enemy and you're just going to be never ending, you know, killing the enemy. So quickly come over here, kill the caster before the enemy gets to you. As you can see, he was still down there. So I dropped down. That was probably the worst decision I could have ever made in my fucking life. He just started destroying me. But then I'm just going to kill him. And then we're going to grab a ring that he was guarding. So after you kill him, come over here again. We're going to use the Path of Dragon emote yet again. You can press triangle to switch it if you don't have it on there. And then just press square to test it. And you just want to use it until the ring pops up. Again, it's probably about six seconds or so and it'll automatically pop up. You'll get the Calamity Ring. So make sure you grab that before we leave this area. Now we're going to go back to where the wyvern died. It's just out this doorway. And the reason we want to go there is because there's going to be another ring we can grab now that the boss is out of the area. So since we got teleported automatically after the boss, we'll go up the ladder we climbed before. We're going to drop down this platform. I've sped it up for convenience. We're going to drop down this platform, drop down to this platform, then drop down again, and then make your way down safely. Keep healing accordingly so you don't fall and die because that would be fucking embarrassing. I would never do that, obviously. And then when you get to the bell, you're going to make a right. You can pick up all the embers here as well. And then you'll find that there's a pathway here on the ledge. And again, this is on the right path past the bell. And on the ledge here is going to be our ring. Okay, so grab that and then you can go onto your quick menu if you set it up and use the coiled sword. Then that way we can go back to the bonfire we last rested at. This time you're just going to run straight up the stairs to the right. You go out this window here to the right and then drop down these stairs. There's going to be some enemies on the left side so you just kind of want to hug the right and just roll. So he doesn't hit you. As you can see he missed. And then you'll see a wooden platform over here you can drop down to. Watch out for the enemy again. And then immediately to the left on this pillar is going to be a ladder. Climb the ladder for another ring. So you just want to quickly grab the Thunderstone Plate Ring and then we're just going to head out over here to our left and then forward onto the wooden platform. There is a big enemy that pops out so you want to try and like be quick to dodge all of these. As you can see he just smacked my ass. You don't want to go off the side of the map so just try and stay forward. Keep running. You can kill him if you really want to but I recommend just running. 
Now I went up here for a second just to dodge him to give myself a time for basically to heal. And then he just fucked my whole day up anyways. He was like, hey, bro, you having a good Monday? And then just come out this way and then make our way back up the stairs. Now there's going to be these rolly guys. You don't want to get hit by them because they can take you off the ledge. And you want to avoid this wyvern's fire. You don't have to kill him. He's like a weakened version of the boss, basically. Run up here, get these guys to aggro, but then roll past them. If you get knocked back, it's not a big deal as long as you don't get knocked off the ledge. So try to stay towards the center. Then you can heal once you're at the top of the stairs. We're going to keep running again, and then we're going to go left. Then we're going to go right, and then left again. There's going to be another caster that spawns a enemy there, but we're just going to run straight past him because we're almost at the bonfire. And then you can drop down. I try to dodge the magic, but you can drop down into this area over here. So this is to the left. And then up ahead past this corridor is going to be another bonfire. So I'm just moving left and right so I don't get hit by magic. Activate the bonfire. Then we can go out the other doorway over here. Go down the stairs. There's going to be a lot of these enemies. I recommend just running to grab these ashes can kill them all but there is quite a lot so you, you have a few to go through as you can see there i was trash and i died so i picked up my souls we grabbed the dragon chasers ashes and we're just going to try and make it back to the bonfire that way we can reset the enemies unless you killed them then you don't really need to but from the bonfire this time instead of going left we'll go straight across and up the staircase across from where we went down and then you'll come into this area with a doorway to your left and then there's going to be a ladder to your left. Make sure you don't get blasted by these enemies. So as you can see, I'm just kind of kiting them around. So that way it gives me a chance to go up the ladder. So I baited out a few attacks, but they still got me. But that should be okay. You should be able to make it all the way up. I was still getting hit by fireballs as well. And then you can heal at the very top just to make sure you don't die. We're going to head over this way, ignoring the enemy to the right. And then you can drop down here. You'll take a little bit of damage or a lot of bit of damage. And there's going to be some enemies in this area here, but there's also going to be a spell. Sorry, there's going to be one enemy. So just quickly kill him. Magic's pretty decent on them. Now, after you take him out, there's going to be a miracle that he was guarding. So we'll grab the miracle. We'll then use the sword fragment to teleport back to the Fire Link Shrine. We're actually near the end of the episode and the final boss. So we're coming up on the final boss but we're going to do some cleanup here in the Firelink Shrine first. So from the bonfire, head left and drop down to find Yuria. Now we're going to get two rings from Yuria, so it's going to be a nice bit of uh, addition to our collection of rings. So we're going to buy the untrue white ring and the untrue dark ring. So two rings you want to buy. You should already have a ring of sacrifice, but if you don't, you can buy one as well since she sells three. Immediately after that, you can start putting in the Lords of Cinder into their thrones. This one, you have to be back a bit further. But after you've put all of them in the throne, that's going to trigger our last boss. It's basically going to make us go to the last boss area. But before we speak to the Firelink Shrine Keeper, so before you speak to the Fire Keeper, run down and head over to the Blacksmith. You can then use all of your Estus Shards that we've collected and that'll get you the ultimate Estus trophy. That way you're really prepared for the final fight. You have plenty of flasks. And then you can talk through the Firekeeper's dialogue. After she's repeating her dialogue, you'll then have the option to kneel at the bonfire in the center of the room. So again, make sure you did that bit of cleanup that I mentioned before. We're going to get a few endings in this as well by using save scumming. But I'll explain that in the next video when we do the final boss fight and the cleanup. So next up, we're going to head up this area here. We're in a new area, and the bonfire is actually to the left. I'm just a bit of a fucking idiot. But that's it, guys. I'm going to see you in the next episode where we have the final boss and the cleanup. Interact with the bonfire. So we'll end it here right before the final boss. But if you're still following along and you're one of my real ones, why don't you leave a comment below that says, Soul of Cinder, I'm coming for that ash. I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you. Thank you.